Hey, what's up guys? My name is Irina and welcome to my channel where I review everything tech. As soon as I got my Samsung Galaxy s I immediately tested its cameras. And if you missed my previous video and you're curious to see the results, check out the link in the description. Then, naturally, I got really curious to compare my s with my OnePlus 6T that I've been using as my semi-daily driver for a while. The camera on the 6T is pretty good, no complaints here. However, the new Galaxy s turned out to have a pretty decent camera as well, so let's see how they compare. But before we start, Let's do a quick specs refresher first. Both of these phones got dual rear cameras, we get 12 megapixels on the main camera and 16 megapixels on the ultra wide camera of the s &E. And when it comes to the OnePlus 6T, we get 16 megapixels on the main camera and 20 megapixels on the secondary one. However, megapixels rarely tell us the whole story. Let's look at the apertures of these devices. The Galaxy s &E has the dual aperture of 1.5 and 2.4 on its main camera, which on paper should give an advantage, so we'll see how that translates in the real-world comparison. And it has the aperture of 2.2 on its ultra-wide camera. When it comes to the OnePlus 6T, we have the aperture of 1.7 on both cameras. When I take photos for a camera comparison test, I always try to keep my personal input to the minimum. So most of the time I just let cameras do their job and try to make the whole thing in the most intuitive way, just like we do in the real life. So all those aspects like focus, exposure, HDR, etc. are not manually controlled. So in this video we'll look at some daylight photos, night shots, portraits, selfies and portrait selfies and much much more. And of course I'll test the video quality and stabilization. Let's start with some random daylight shots and the first thing I noticed was the fact that the photos from the s &E always look crisper and more contrasty. If you look at the shadow of the street light, manhole covers or even the sky, you could clearly see this difference. Overall, the photo from the s &E looks a little brighter and let's look at some other examples. In the next pretty boring shots I admit, and guys I'm sorry for that, you can really see this difference in contrast as well, if you look at the shadow of that wire mesh. Same thing in the next pair of shots, when you look at the shadow of the tree. And now let's speak about the colors. In this pair of shots, the s &E gives us more in terms of saturation and colors, while the 60s photo looks more natural to me. Some people love when the colors just pop in the photos, some people hate it, so of course it's up to your preferences, guys. And speaking of colors, let's look at some photos taken in slightly more difficult light conditions. I was standing in the shadows while taking photos of a pretty exposed area, and the first thing that struck me once again was to see how the colors from the Galaxy s &E just appear more vivid. This cool bus looks so different in these two photos. Also, the shot from the s &E looks once again more contrasty and lighter. I think having the dual aperture on a smartphone can be a pretty helpful thing. Now let's look at some portrait shots. Both phones did a pretty good job separating me from the background, even my hair looks pretty good in these two portraits, so we can't see any particular flaws. Speaking of skin tones, my face looks a little pinkish in the photo from the 6T, and it looks quite pale in the photo from the s &E. However, I would say that the shot from the Galaxy s &E looks pretty close to being overexposed, especially if you look at my hands. However, both shots have beautiful backgrounds with nice detailed sky which is not overexposed. It's really hard to see which one is better, really curious to know what you guys think. And one more example of portrait shots for you guys, and I think we have a recurrent pattern here in terms of separation from the background, exposure and skin colors. Now it's time for some selfies, and let's look at the front-facing camera specs. We have 16 megapixels with the aperture of 2.0 on the OnePlus 6T, and 10 megapixels with the aperture of 1.9 on the Galaxy s &E. First, let's look at some photos taken indoors, a big difference in color temperatures and exposures here. The photo from the s &E came out pretty light, so we can see all the details, especially when it comes to my hair, while the shot from the 6T is pretty contrasty, so my hair looks really dark and it loses some details. In terms of skin tones, the 6T has always had this tendency to make skin look quite pale in selfies, while the shots from the s &E, I would say, have pretty natural skin tones. Moving on to the selfies taken outdoors, and you can judge them for yourself. 
I also took portrait selfies, and I think these two photos actually differ at the same point as standard selfies. The only thing I noticed about the portrait selfies from the Galaxy s &E is that oftentimes the skin looks over-retouched, even though the retouching feature is off. But maybe it will be fixed in the future, we'll see. Next, let's look at some photos taken in the really challenging low light conditions with a lot of street lights. The first thing that strikes me is the quite significant difference in color temperatures. Overall, the shot from the 6T looks pretty grainy when compared to the s &E. However, both phones provide us with all the details in the photo, even though it was pretty dark outside and the street was full of sparkling and constantly changing lights. Next, let's take a look at some night shots. And right off the bat, we can see that the photo from the s looks slightly lighter than the photo from the 6T. And if I zoom in, both shots look quite clear, but if you ask me between these two particular photos, I think I would choose the shot from the 6T. And in the next two photos, both cameras perform quite similarly. The shot from the Galaxy s &E is once again lighter, but at the same time it looks noisier than the shot from the OnePlus 6T. Now let's look at some 4K videos. And guys, look at the difference! It actually feels like two different places. It looks like the 6T adds some filter to its videos, and when it comes to the s &E, I'd say its videos look pretty natural. Next, let's look at some stabilization tests. I have to admit that both phones are really good at it. I'm really hesitant to say who's the winner here. What do you think, guys? Well, it's been a pretty interesting comparison for me, and guys, I hope you enjoyed it as well. Thanks for watching, and see you later!